everybody, it's Lon Sybin, and a viewer, Vinny Lebo, wrote in and asked if I would check out the Gigabyte Mini PC. This is called the Bricks, and the reason being that this is a very inexpensive computer. The bare bones kit we're looking at here is $123. You do have to add memory and a hard drive to it, uh, but it's very possible to get this into the price range of a Chrome box and not be limited by the Chrome OS. You can install pretty much uh, Windows 8, pretty much any Linux installation. You could even install uh, Chrome on here if you wanted to. So you have a little bit more flexibility at a similar price point. Uh, it's running a Celeron N2807 processor. It has a UEFI BIOS, so any uh, operating system that will work uh, with that BIOS configuration will work here. Um, it is fanless, so it is completely silent. So I know a lot of you are looking for uh, you know, more high-powered home theater solutions that are running on Intel chips. Uh, this is it. It is completely silent when it's operating, even when it's under load. Uh, and that load is minimal. It's only 30 watts in power. So it's actually uh, close in voltage to uh, set-top boxes that have far less horsepower. So this is a pretty uh, nicely efficient system. Now, you saw the USB 3.0 port on the front. Uh, you have uh, two additional USB 2.0 ports in the back. Uh, gigabit Ethernet here, uh, HDMI, and you also get a second display option on the side here. This is VGA and audio, so you can drive two displays without having to add any additional hardware to it. And of course, that uh, USB 3 on the front. Now, when you buy this, the first thing you have to do is take it apart because this is a bare bones kit. It's lacking hard drive and memory, so you have to add both of those. And I've already done that, so I have a uh, SSD that I use for all of my experiments in uh, the slot here. It's uh, connected via SATA. You just want to be careful with this cable because it is attached to the motherboard. I I think it's uh, socketed in, but you don't really want to snag it too much. Uh, and then I have uh, a stick of four gigabytes of RAM that I bought from Newegg when I bought this uh, bare bones kit. And this is a mini PCI slot here, and in there is a card for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So uh, that is installed when you get it, and it's part of the package. And I think you could probably take it out and put in some other mini PCI card. I'm not sure what you would put in there, but if you do know, let me know, and I will uh, be, be interested in knowing that. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is put this back together and boot it up. Now what I did was install Windows 8.1 on here because I wanted to see, you know, Windows is probably the, the hardest operating system you're going to throw at one of these devices. So if, if Windows works, everything else will. So so uh, we're going to boot up Windows 8.1. It's already installed and operating. Uh, we're going to look at uh, emulation, a GameCube emulator. We're going to look at gaming. We're going to take a look at Kerbal Space Program, which is one of my favorite games. And then uh, we're going to look at its home theater capabilities, specifically uh, XBMC and how well uh, it will function playing videos over my network. So let's get this uh, thing back together and check those out. I do want to show you the boot time, so we're going to push the button here and you'll see how fast it comes up. Now, if I was plugged into a normal monitor, we would see some BIOS messages and whatnot. Um, but due to how my video system works, it has to wait until Windows actually boots up. But as you can see, it really uh, doesn't take all that long at all to uh, get this, this computer up and running very quickly. So uh, we're going to go take a look right now at Kerbal Space Program. All right, well, here we are running Kerbal Space Program, and this is a pretty demanding game uh, for a whole variety of reasons. There's a lot of physics going on. There's certainly some complex graphics to uh, contend with, and um, it is sluggish. I have seen it run worse than this on cheap PCs like this, so this is actually not too bad, all things considered. So I think if we were to tweak the graphics a little bit and adjust some things here or there, uh, we might be able to get it to a more playable state. But I think, just like uh, that Asus tablet I reviewed a few months ago, I think you could probably get things like you know, the original um, uh, uh, Portal or, or Half-Life and you know, some of the games that are maybe five or 10 years old uh, might actually perform okay on this platform. You know, the newer stuff, forget it. Um, but for the older stuff, definitely. So speaking of older stuff, let's check out the Dolphin GameCube emulator and see how that fares. So here is Super Mario Sunshine running on the GameCube emulator called Dolphin. And as you can see, it actually runs pretty nicely. We're getting about anywhere from 20 to 30 frames per second, depending on what's going on on screen. I've seen it uh, dip down a little bit lower when there's a lot of stuff happening, but um, things are playable here, and certainly a lot more playable than I've seen uh, in other devices at this price point. So uh, again, not too bad, and I think if you look at you know, systems from the 32-bit era backwards, including the Nintendo 64, I think you're going to be uh, pretty happy with the results on this. So um, pretty impressive. All right, so the moment we've all been waiting for, which is XBMC, how does that function? So let's take a look. We're going to go switch to my desk camera here real quick just to be safe. Uh, and the reason is, is that sometimes they throw you off YouTube for just streaming this stuff live like this. But we're going to go uh, into my Blu-ray folders that are on my WD My Cloud. I've got a Blu-ray MKV here of Gravity, and I'm going to hit the button here and watch how fast it comes up. I mean, it is almost instantaneous, and we're seeing it on screen. I was able to get uh, all my DTS and Dolby Digital audio to pass over to my home theater receiver. You do have to go in and uh, you know, turn that feature on in the uh, settings screen, but once you do that, 
Uh, this is a full-fledged Blu-ray player in addition to all the other things that it can do. So uh, that was pretty impressive. So let's take a look also at how well it can tune my HD home run. And we'll go back over to, and I didn't set it up the way some of you have talked about, and I have to learn how to do that as far as setting this up as a tuner for that. But I'm going to just connect to it via DLNA. And we'll just scroll down to my HD channels. It doesn't do, um, you know, the, the, uh, the HBOs and the stuff that are DRM'd, but just about everything else on my cable system I'm able to uh, look at here. So we'll just pull up uh, my WVIT, which is my NBC affiliate. And again, it spins up uh, really fast there as well. So that is the Gigabyte Bricks. And I have to say, I am really impressed with this little PC uh, for a whole host of reasons. The first, of course, is the price um, there is no reason why you can't get this working for under $200. I think it's really that functional. Um, you just get like a little SSD, get four gigs of RAM, and then connect it to your network and have all those big files living on, you know, my clouds or network attached storage devices similar to that, and you're good to go. And what's really amazing about it is that this is a fully functional PC. So it, it isn't like something that, oh, I can just run Windows on it and, you know, maybe it runs really slow or whatever. This is actually usable. And, um, you know, I can just go to my uh, YouTube channel here. It just things pop up like you would expect them to on a, on a PC that might cost more than this. And, you know, overall, I think this is a really uh, just a good value and something that you're going to get a lot of use out of. Certainly better, I think, than a Chromebox, which is really hard to shoehorn things onto. This is an open platform. Uh, you're, again, you're buying it without even a hard drive and RAM. You can pick out your own components and make it work the way you want it to. So uh, for a home theater PC, definitely not so much for modern gaming, but as a retro gaming station, it would be fantastic. So you could pretty much have this replace your Blu-ray player and about 16 game consoles over the last uh, three decades, uh, and you'll be good to go. So I'm, I'm impressed. I recommend it. It's the Gigabyte Bricks, and I want to thank Vinny Levo uh, for telling me about it because I'm going to go play with this thing some more tonight. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. Thank you.